Hey guys, Peter with Lost Angler, and today we're going to tie a true masterpiece of fly tying. <clears throat> so it's going to take about two or three hours. It may be one of the most amazing things you've done. No, I'm kidding. Actually, we're just going to tie a redfish fly. Today we're going to tie a redfish charlie. It's my take on a crazy charlie for redfish. It's all synthetic, so it's easy to cast, doesn't hold water. It's easy to make those quick deliveries because sometimes redfish can kind of just pop up like right there. You know what I'm talking about? Right beside the boat, or they can be a good ways off. So you need a fly that can be good for your short game and for your long game. This is one of my go-to patterns. I'll show you how to tie it. Hey guys, this is Peter with Lost Angler, and today we're going to tie my Redfish Charlie. The Redfish Charlie is where I tried to take the great and amazing idea of the Crazy Charlie and adapt it to fishing down here in the marsh. The idea was to give myself a bigger profile, something that would probably be a little bit more appealing to a Redfish, although you can use a Crazy Charlie on a Redfish. First thing we're going to do, now that I've got a nice layer of thread, is I'm going to add on some medium pseudo eyes. I use the pseudo because I can use a bigger eye without making it too heavy. That's something we usually don't think about in redfish, because when we're fishing for them is uh, getting too heavy. A lot of times these fish aren't in very, very deep water. I'd say 90% of the time when we're fishing for them in there, should be in less than three foot of water. But, sometimes they can surprise us and be in deeper. But, the biggest thing for me is, I want to be able to cast it easy. That's the biggest thing we don't think about. How easy is it to cast? Because a lot of times, your redfish can make you work on your short game. They don't always pop up nice and convenient. So the first thing I'm going to add is some white EP fiber. Not a whole heck of a lot, just a little bit. When we're doing this part, a little goes a long way. I'm going to come on down the fly, down into the bend. The hook, double it over, put on a little bit too much, that's fine, we're going to trim it out later on, it ain't no big thing, come on down the bend of that hook, and the reason is, this is kind of going to lend itself to almost being like a bend back, next thing I'm going to add is some ribbon, now the ribbon I'm using, it's clear stretch cord, you can pick it up at any craft store, uh, it's like 45 feet of clear stretch cord, 45 foot of ribbon basically for a dollar, dollar and a half. I'm not really sure what the difference between ordinary ribbing and stretch cord is, but stretch cord seems to do just fine for me on what I tie. So it's a nice and expensive alternative. Next thing I'm going to add is Flashaboo. Now I'm using Pearl Flashaboo. I've got about four or five pieces. Not a whole heck of a lot. I'm going to double it over again. Just want to try to be quick and efficient on this one. Alright, I'm going to go over the body. The reason I'm going over this ribbon is I want to add some thickness the biggest thing is putting it underneath the ribbon is going to give it a very nice natural look to it. Come on over, up and over, up and over, up and over. Alright, then I'm going to come right around it from the top, gather it on up, and come back down. Boom. 
Simple, simple, simple. Lots of flash, lots of flash. But with this fly, I want the flash to be more natural inside the ribbon. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this ribbon right on around the body of my fly. The trick is you want to keep that finger right there to push it on down to give yourself nice, even sets on your ribbon. If my hand's in the way, I'm sorry. I'm just doing the best I can. There we go. Coming on around. It's not going to be perfect, y'all. Don't worry about it if it's not perfect. I promise to goodness the redfish are not judging. They're just hungry. Now don't get me wrong, sometimes red fish can get picky. They can get awful picky. If they get set on one particular kind of food they're eating, they can be tough to catch. So what I try to do with my patterns is be kind of generalistic. Whoop! Oh, if I just let go. Here we go. Let me bring that on back around. Tying off my ribbon. Nice and clean. Cut it off. Very nice. Gather it up some. There. There's your body of the fly. Not too bad. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to flip the fly over. Alright, now I've got my fly flipped over. I'm going to go back with a little bit more EP brush, but this time, instead of using brush, I'm just using some EP fiber. This time we're doing it in tan. Pull out a small clump. My rule of thumb with EP fiber is to generally use more than what you need. So I'm going to pull out an amount, probably I'd say about half the thickness of a number two pencil. I like that. You know what? I think I'm going to thin that out some more. Almost half that again. I'm gonna take it, set it on the front hook, tie it over. It's very important to keep that cleared. It's not too tough. It just takes a little bit of patience. Now that's in there. The next thing I'm gonna set in now is gonna be some red crystal flash. Not a whole heck of a lot. A little goes a long way. Red is one of those colors. And my goodness, you can see it in the water. And what I want to do is I want to make the fly look like it's been hit. Maybe a little, maybe been injured a little bit. Boom. So that's about three strands there. Not too bad. I'm going to take it and I'm going to fold it over. See I've got and I'm doubling it around. I'm going to pull that up. And I'm going to tie that in. Nice and neat. Easy as pie. Now, my EP fiber wrapped on me. Not a big deal. I'll take it over. Pick it up like this. Bring everybody in together. All one big family. There we go. That did it. And we'll brush it out in a little while. There's not a whole heck of a lot of flash in this fly. And the truth is, a lot of times we get carried away, I think, in the amount of flash you need for redfish. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to form our own little dubbing brush. So give me just a minute and I'll get set up for that. Alright guys, so now I've got to cut some EP fiber, cutting some clumps about like that. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my thread, take it, and I'll loop it over itself, just like that. And we're going to make our own little dubbing brush. So once I've got it looped over, I'm going to go round and round and round, 
with the bobbin. Pull up nice and tight. Try right here. What I'm going to do to make sure I get it to where I want it, I'm going to tie it up further towards where I started. Now that I've got that loop right there, what I found that I like to do next is I want to take these fibers. I'm just going to slide them up in here, in between the two halves, and I'm going to spread them out. All the way up and down. Get that going. As you can see with the stub and loop, just a hair. Alright, as you can see with the stub and loop, I got it going pretty good. You just want to twist it on up. Just keep twisting until you get it where you want it. Just remember the tighter you have it, guys. You may need to brush it out eventually, so just get it up nice and tight till you feel comfortable with it. Then once you've got it where you're comfortable, I like to take a toothbrush. Nothing too fancy. Just whatever old toothbrush you got that you wow out. Just scrub it out. Just fluff it right on out. There you go. There you go. Alright, now that I've got that done, I'm going to take it, I'm going to slide my dubbing up. As you can see, this isn't a super hard pack dubbing. And I'm not using anything but my ordinary time thread. So take it, we're going to wrap it on around. Remember, the idea is we want to keep it as close to what we're working on as possible. So now I've got it. So brush. And just kind of brush as you go. Make your way around. You want to do your best to try to pull as much fiber away from where you're wrapping as humanly possible. It's not going to be an easy thing by a long shot. And you're probably going to have to pick it out. Okay? So just keep on coming. Big deal. There you go. Alright. So now that you got this old nappy thing, just take it, tie it off. There we go. It's easy to get a little bit too much going on up here. So just be patient. There we go. Got it captured. There we go. I'm going to take this, throw it over the top, cut off my excess. tie this off. Alright guys, so after a lot of trial and tribulation, we're all tied off. Just going to have to trim as you go. I was probably a little bit too overly ambitious in my dubbing loop, but that's okay. I'll trim out. Alright, so now that we've got it all done up, I'm going to brush it out a little bit more. I'm going to take it out of the vise. Just give it a good trim all the way around. Just trim it and shape it. And think of your EP fiber as like trimming deer hair. So, see how I'm building a cone with it? There you go. And that's exactly what you're going to want to do. It's just kind of build the cone with it. Go around. 
Now this is the important part when we get right here. We've got a lot of extra. And that's fine and that's really what we want to just kind of trim it all off to your comfortable length. So for me, this is a good size. See what I'm saying? Now I'll just trim it up and shape it till I've got it kind of a minnowy shape. So let me do some shaping. Alright, so after a lot of trimming and love, this is what you're left with. Nice, evenly slicked thing. And as you kind of trim up, you'll notice that that slash of red in there becomes just more and more apparent. The last final touch that's a little redundant, wasn't it? The final touch that I'm going to add to this fly. I'm just going to crimp it in just a hair. And I'm going to take myself a nice brown sharpie. And I'm add some striations. Because sometimes your mud minnows kind of get that stripe. Or bull minnows, whatever you want to call them. They get that striping in them. So, do your shrimp. So, I guess for me, this kind of pattern right here is almost like an Adam's fly. It just imitates a lot of different stuff. So there you go, guys. Redfish Charlie. Okay, guys. We just covered the Redfish Charlie. Easy pattern. I know I left some of the trim work out, but just take my hard for it, it's not that hard. Just what you want to look for is in the head of the fly. It's going to be a little bit like trimming deer hair, but for the rest of it, it's kind of like trimming an EP minnow. Nothing too terribly difficult. It takes a little bit of practice, but it's a fly that's extremely tough, very durable, super easy to cast. Add the striations throughout it, I think makes the general pattern because it can kind of look like a shrimp kind of look like a bull minnow. And to me, having that kind of a go-between, if I've got that basic silhouette, I've got the right action, the right colors, then odds are I'll get my fish. I hope this helps. I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll catch you next time. Thanks.